have a new plot on the course of the Magna Eater. She's heading toward the Parliament. Iron King. The Creole girl is on its way. So hang on. We all make that fat crawl escape a swift blood. Fun stuff. Oh, 
hit me with your real gun. you have here if you've given up on life hang on stranger you'll long to return here one day they all do i'm mcgrath mcgrath your aquarian tsunami booster is legendary but desperate times call for desperate beverages we're surrounded by cave dwellers massive monsters and politicians run amok what can you give me to take the edge off hmm the perfect drink would bring the brain to a standstill and keep it idling indefinitely. Let me think. 
The end of the world is knocking at the door. Hurry up, I've got it. This clear liquid is a gland secretion from the Vampyrotoitus infernalis, the vampire squid, which lives in the hot vents in the Pacific. If I add just a few drops of scopolamine, your consciousness will bounce, then drift into a trance full of dreams. McGrath's oasis of the foaming peace awaits. Creepy. Asante san. Thank you again that I was allowed to fight with the Radiant Man. You are quite charming, Princess. How about the two of us go a few rounds in a different kind of fight? Good grief, Flint. If testosterone was absorbent, you could dry up the whole Pacific. Well, I suppose we should thank God you weren't in a duel of wits. But still, you did give it your best, and you have my eternal thanks. You may also be interested to know that there have been some startling developments. What the hell hasn't been startling? Hell, if you can top that last battle, you win a prize. We have a new ally. They have the cold heart of a politician, the dark soul of an advertising executive, and they're as black as a miner's lungs. I'm speaking, of course, of the Bions. Ta-da! Bunch of crap. What? Take a look at the main screen. Three days ago, the Bions made contact with us. It was a computer voice, no human modulation. Ghostly, monotonous. They recognized the enormous threat to Aqua from the old ones and offered us their help. As a concession, they wanted a ceasefire so they could operate without opposition on the expectant battlefield near Neapolis. Well, I don't trust those brain-connected beasts at all. The government of Neapolis is crazy. We've talked it over with El Tapo, and he thinks we ought to at least give it a try. We're not in any position to reject an alliance. And if it proves to be a trap, we've still got you. Well, you know what I think? I think we're making a disastrous mistake. Not a whoops mistake, like when you shoot the wrong guy, but the kind of mistake that could mean the end of Aqua. Flint, that's not the only news. A few weeks ago, I had the chance to explore the caverns of the Continental Slope on my own. The analysis of the data I collected revealed what these monsters are and where they're coming from. The ancient city of Rala. Oh, hey. Did I miss conversation? Professor with Charlotte other Gilmore was a fascinating woman. She had researched the continental slopes of the tornado zone in her explorer ship, Nunit, and now presented us with the results. She showed us the entrance to a world of caves, where a 500-year-old culture of technology and terror lurked. It was the world of the Crawlers. The legends of the Tornado Zone spoke harshly about the Crawlers. It was said they lived without light, using biological and chip implants, turning themselves into hideous patchwork fiends. They attacked stations, travelers, cargo ships, always leaving destruction in their wake, but no trace of victims on the battlefield. That gave credence to the legend that the crawlers were cannibals. Revolting and dangerous man-eaters wallowing in sediment. Gilmore had more guts than all of us put together. Alone, she'd explored the caves and tunnels of the crawler's world, pushing deep into the Earth's core. She showed us the way into that hell, and we could hear the screams of tortured victims reverberating with the grunts of their tormentors. When I saw the pictures, I had only one reaction. I wanted to see the crawlers dead, their colony of darkness in ruins, their grotesque forms spasming in a boiling and bloody sea. I wanted to look in the eye of their boss devil, Mad Sam Cohonan, and show him the darkest part of Deadeye Flint's soul. Fun stuff! Gilmore's pictures became even eerier and more disturbing. It was like a dream filled with magic, fear, loneliness, and desperate need. I had never felt as abandoned as I felt there, deep in the Earth's mantle, surrounded by the most horrible blackness. Imprisoned, blind, deaf, and forgotten.
From the remains we were looking at, the ancient civilization clearly had not lived underwater. Those caves had been dry as a bone right up until the South Pole melted. Gilmore claimed she was on the trail of a civilization that had ruled the surface 12,000 years ago. She believed they had retreated deeper and deeper into the crevices of the Earth, but she didn't know why. They took their energy from a mysterious source of inexhaustible power, she said, and they must have come into contact with powerful intraterrestrial beings. The Atlantides, as Gilmore called them, lived in worship of their monstrous gods, called Old Ones in the most ancient of the surviving manuscripts. But the gods they worshipped were devils, and their worship led to the rule of torment and fear. At some point, the Atlantides managed to lure their monstrous gods into the gigantic subterranean caves, turning them into prisons. The legendary city of Bathopolis was said to lie down there, at the edge of the deepest point on the planet. Gilmore, sweet and crazy Charlotte, said we would find the entrance to the inner earth of the Atlantides there. This inner world was said to be a giant hollow sphere with its own sun, a fairy tale paradise even more beautiful than the surface world of old. Me, I had an absolute belief that the core of the Earth was full of fluid metals, its massive nickel iron nucleus powering the good old dynamo we call the magnetic field. One second, how this goes, and you move closer to your death. All of you, we're going to overrun you. Like the breath of a deer, like black angels of fat. Your pale teeth, your fragile bones. Everything will belong to us. Who knows? Maybe I've already taken your mother. And now to have a little brother. What's that you say? Your mother will arrive. Yes. We are the pure essence of aqua. Beyond tolerance. Beyond morning. We are our own destiny. Uh, do you write your own material? The aim of our efforts is to introduce the development of a dark destiny. In the end, they will be free seamen with powerful minds and strong bodies. And they will never see Aqua as a prison again. You're just another criminal headed for a judge. <laughs> you want to be my judge? Watch me spreading my arms over the apples. <laughs> Apart from that, it's all just fun, isn't it? Oh, before I forget, my friend Commodore Sue is waiting for you to come call your place. He's a rationalist, and he believes he can persuade you with reason. Damn it! What are we gonna do if the squares keep getting bigger and fatter? Calm down. Your dopamine production is getting the better of you again. We need a strategy, and I can't think of anybody I'd rather consult than Gilmore. Her tactical suggestions during battle are well thought out, and she knows the squids better than anyone. Oh, the hell with this! Is she gonna hold on to that Marex monster so we can beat the...